continuing our 21 in 21 with AMA Superbike Champions. There's been 21 since the inception all the way back in 1976. And so far, we've had a chance to talk to many of those Superbike champs. And now I'd like to welcome in number 17 on the list. Please welcome in Ben Spees. What's up, Ben? How are you? How y'all doing? How's it going? Yeah, really well, man. So obviously you were a Superbike champ from 06 to 08, reigning Superbike champ with 24 wins in between. So let's get right into it, Ben. Tell me about those years in Superbike and what was the paddock like and what was the racing like? I mean, it, it was it was great. Those were those were my favorite years racing, you know, a motorcycle. I've, I always say that to people. Um, some of the hardest racing, you know, that I ever had. Um, you know, on the same bikes, everything was just so tight, um, really hard to win those races and those championships. And then I had such a good team with me, kind of got to hand pick, you know, a couple of the guys over the years and, and had Tom Houseworth, obviously, as my crew chief then. And uh, I just got to say, it was like a family. We just, it was, and, and I loved it. And uh, I didn't really want it to ever leave. I mean, I kind of went over to Europe for a lot of reasons that were going on, but you know, those years racing AMA, I mean, I'll never, never trade them. I mean, they were their family guys. When I catch up with them at the races, it's awesome to see them with, you know, the new guys they're working with. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's hard to go back because the times are a little bit different too. And, and things always change, but it was, uh, it was good to be a part of it, you know, and, and get to see it and uh, kind of have those, those uh, few titles for sure. So you win those three Superbike titles and hard-fought victories each year, and then it propels you onto the world stage. What happened next after you were an AMA Superbike? Yeah, so we went, you know, in 2009, it was uh, getting off a plane and everything was new. You know, I mean, the the tires were different companies, suspension, electronics, the motorcycle. Uh, had Tom as a familiar face. Um, I had a really good suspension guy that year, too, with us. And then... Uh, got to bring Woody over, who was with my Yoshimura crew for those few years, uh, midway through the season. So a couple of fam familiarities, but it was a lot of different stuff and, and a lot of stuff to overcome. But there were so many things and so much stuff going on that it was pretty much just head down, you know, every lap. Uh, couldn't waste any time because we had a couple little things go wrong that year. And then we won the world title and it was just, it happened in a blur, but it was, uh, it was awesome. And, and, uh, like I said, it was a, it was a big feat and something even still now today, it kind of, you know, I get more used to or understand, you know, how big it was back then I was a racer that, you know, nothing was really big at the time to me. Cause I was always looking to the next thing. And, you know, some people always took that, they could take it in the wrong way. I think sometimes, but I just was that focused and, and uh, nowadays it's even, it's even more sweet for sure. And then it was off to MotoGP. Yeah, it was just quick, uh, straight to GP and kind of, it was a pretty hard decision to make in that year to go to GP because Yamaha wanted me to go there. Um, it was also right in the time when I, I wasn't for sure if I was going to win the world title or not. There were three races left. I was kind of having to make that decision and I wanted to win the title and it would have been one of those things that if I went over there, didn't win the title, I would have, things wouldn't have went the way I wanted to for sure. So you know, now that I went over there, GP was tough. You know, we had a couple, couple really good years. And then the last year it wasn't that great. Had some bad luck with it, but it's one of those things I tell people too, that, you know, we did have bad luck in our last year. I had to retire through an injury with GP, but I look at all the years I had with racing and we had a lot of good years and I wouldn't even say, you know, just good luck, but we were on top of things and we had a lot of things go for us, but you know, we had one bad year and I don't, I don't look back at it now and it's just, oh, that, you know, that just ruined everything. And it just happened like that. And it, it was unfortunate. That's the way it ended. And I was, you know, pissed off for a little bit about it, but you know, in the same time you start looking back and it's like, man, you're able to accomplish this much with this many people with the, with this group of peoples and, and meet all the, you know, friendships and everything. And it's all good. So, I mean, it was a, it was, it was a long, hard one. And, and, a, and a lot of years that were pretty fast together, but no, it was, we enjoyed all of it. Looking at 06 to 08 in your Superbike titles, is there any particular race or incident or anything that really stands out in your mind when you reflect back on those times? Yeah, uh, two. I mean, two for sure, because uh, Laguna Seca 2007, it came down to whoever won the race, you know, and I mean, it was a tough race. It was the only race really that year that me and him kind of were together from lap one. <clears throat> and, uh, 
it was tough. He, he led the whole thing and, and almost cracked me at, at one point with about 10 laps to go. He had, had about a second on me and I just said in my head, I was like, you know, we've raced this many laps, this many races this year. I'm crashing or I'm winning, I'm not finishing second, I'm not going to do it. And uh, that was the only time I really ever said that, but I did <laughs> and uh, marched him down and passed him going into the corkscrew. And it was a, it was a big pass, you know, everybody kind of remembers it. And it was uh, something I, I loved doing on him, you know, and, and uh, able to win the title. I mean, that was, that was super, super special because pretty much everybody in the paddock or 95% of them wanted me to win it, I think, you know, and really were pulling for me. So it, it gave that satisfaction. Um, and then basically in 2008, uh, one of the last times we got to race was at Atlanta. And uh, it was one of those where he made a comment, you know, oh, I wish we would have had the, the showdown here in Atlanta back like we did in 2007. And that was the last time we ever raced there. And I, I marched him down and, and set some lap records and passed him on that one. So th those two kind of, you know, concrete moments were, were big for me, you know, racing against him for sure. No, and a real serious question, taking you back to 2007 Laguna Seca, did I have any influence on that title run that particular weekend for any particular reason whatsoever? <laughs> you, you relieved me from riding, having, from having to ride a second class like I had been doing for those two or three years. Yeah, uh, but that so was that because was nice. you ended up wrapping up the Stock Thousand title th that weekend before at Road Atlanta, so you freed yourself up to doing that. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was that was a very special weekend. So no, you, you had, um, you had racing, my leathers and everything. That was that was pretty funny. I always remember that. Yeah, I still I still have that suit uh, <laughs> with holes drilled in it for communication gear. But beyond that, nice. uh, let's talk about where racing has, or let's put it this way. So, looking at your career post race, how has motorcycles influenced your life moving forward into the life that you have now? Oh man, it just, it, it, well, I mean, it's made the life I have, you know, I mean, just everything I have with my family, <clears throat> you see, uh, see what your kids are able to, to have and, you know, and it's, it's just because of racing, you know, it did everything and, you know, it's definitely taught me, you know, kind of how, how hard things can be and how normal life isn't that tough and, and things like that, because it's not always easy, you know, when you, when you retire and you're a motor, motorcycle racer at that level, when it all stops, I mean, it's, it's not easy for a little bit and everybody has to find their way and figure out what they're doing. And, and luckily I had kids and, and, uh, you know, got into their stuff and then kind of slowly started into some other business now. And I just think that that kind of work ethic from racing, it kind of goes towards, you know, whatever else you kind of get into after, uh, after racing life for sure. So what's going on in your life now that excites you? Like, do you have businesses? Are you getting to do any other activities or any type of riding? What excites you now? Again, you know, just playing, playing with the girls, watching her, you know, she's going to her horse class now and kind of seeing how she's getting right at that moment, kind of where I was when I was about motorcycles at five years old and you know, seeing that stuff. And then, yeah, I started a, a couple companies back in the, a few years ago. One's a, a small oil service company. And then one I just started uh, two months ago. It's an excavation dirt company, construction company. And that's, that's fun for me because the guy that helped me my whole racing career, you know, which was my left-hand man, um, was, was Jeffrey Lemons. And that's basically, we started this company together and I told him, I was like, man, you worked for me, you know, for 15 years doing this stuff. I said, I'm retired now. And I said, let's run it back. And, you know, I'll work for you now. So I've been, I've been running a dozer and a dump truck and stuff like that, you know, getting this business off the ground and having fun. So it's been, uh, it's been a full circle on that. And like I said, it's been, been a blast the last few months. Well, thanks for talking with us, Ben. And thank you so much for all the years of exciting racing, both in the Superbike class and obviously in the other classes you raced in. It's, it was a privilege to watch and to work on those races. Thank you. I, like I said, I always say I wish we could have gone that, you know, three, four more years, but it's just, it's the way it is. You know, we, we always had to take the GP step. We had to try it. I think I would have maybe ended up back in World Superbike a couple years, you know, trying to finish it out. That was kind of the plan, but it just, you know, it's it's not always meant to be and working out in the, the, the picture perfect world. So thanks to everybody for, you know, always being behind me and, and uh, being fans and, and uh, had a good run. Thank you. That's Ben Spees and our 21 in 21 series here on Moto America.